to you and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Nolin Ebel Ame. Let's begin the news with the National Assembly. The Senate has urged the federal government to reposition the Nigerian Nuclear Regulatory Authority to enable it to carry out its mandate as the country looks to include nuclear power in its energy mix. This was in support of the motion raised by Senator Tanko Almakura on the urgent need to address power shortages in the country. The Senate described the visit of President Buhari to Russia as a move in the right direction to stimulate the implementation of the bilateral agreements on nuclear energy cooperation with that country. The Senate also considered and passed five bills for second reading, while ten bills were mentioned at first reading. The presentation of the report of the third ordinary session of the Pan-African Parliament was stepped down to another legislative day. The Senate also urged the Budget Office to increase budgetary allocation to the Federal Ministry of Culture and Tourism as part of the strategy to promote tourism to further diversify the Nigerian economy as moved by Senator Oluremi Tinubu. Details in our subsequent bulletin. Similarly, a bill for an act to establish the Chartered Institute of Treasury Management has been passed by the House of Representatives. The bill made provision for safeguards against fraud, misappropriation and embezzlement in the management of Treasury. Also passed by the House were a bill for an act to establish the Federal Capital Territory Health Insurance Agency and a bill for the repeal and enactment of the Nigeria Law Reform Commission Act. At the commencement of plenary, the Speaker Femi Bajabiamila, following a motion raised under matters of privilege by House Minority Leader Ndudi Elumelu, urged the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, and other related agencies of government to ensure due diligence in their investigations and reports to avoid misrepresentation of facts. The issue was in relation to reports alleged to have emanated from the ICPC concerning financial allocations to the National Assembly for constituency projects in the last 10 years. Senate President Ahmad Lawan says the Ninth National Assembly will partner with Ondo State Government to raise the living standard of the people. He stated this when he paid a courtesy visit on the State Governor Olua Rotimi Akirodulu in Akure Olajidebello reports. The Senate President Ahmad Lawan, who was accompanied by some principal officers and members of the Ninth Assembly, said the Senate under his watch will ensure that all federal government programs targeted at improving the living standard of Nigerians enjoy legislative support in the interest of the masses. We believe that our party platforms were the platform that provided the opportunity for all of us to be there one or nine. But we are conveying into that chamber to work for the betterment of the entire country. He called on Nigerians to continue to give their support to President Muhammadu Buhari-led administration for a better Nigeria. Governor Oluwarutu Makeredolu commended Senator Ahmed Lawan and his entourage for coming to visit one of them, Senator Nicholas Tufomo, representing Undu South Senatorial District, who was involved in a road accident recently, saying the visit has demonstrated good leadership by the Senate President. We have the president. A president that is respected all over the world of us have the greatest respect for him. So all of us have to work with him. 
to take this nation to a very greater height. The governor lauded the spirit of oneness in the Ninth National Assembly. From Akure Olajide Bello, NTA News. Let's now turn our attention to security for Nigeria to effectively come up with homegrown solutions to tackle high security challenges. Experts are of the opinion that the nation must properly engage and reorient politicians and security agencies. This guest on Good Morning Nigeria says will go a long way to addressing a huge percentage of Nigeria's insecurity, which they say is mostly politically motivated. Lydia Sampson tells us more. According to research, a global approach to tackling insecurity does not always help in the case of peculiar countries with peculiar local issues, and as a result, most countries come up with their own homegrown solutions. The guests are unanimous that firstly, solutions must be found to the root causes of the problem, and basic needs must be provided for citizens. One thing that our leader be able to grapple with sooner than late. We have no faith in us. And the worst offenders here are the politicians. We tend to think anything that is foreign is superior. But I want to assure you that no foreign security solution, not even the best security operative out there, can have the native ability levels of the lowliest and the most junior security operative in here. Now the good news for us is that currently the Office of the National Security Advisor is revising the current national security strategy and it may shock some of us that the first time we actually introduced one was in 2014 and now we're reviewing it. They also reiterated the need for the deployment of technology in crime fighting. We need to find a way of reorientating our youths. If it's possible to design a kind of, maybe a new subject or something, in our curriculum, school curriculum, starting from the primary school up to secondary school level, to let these youths know that crime does not pay. I continue to emphasize that uh, we are politicizing our security architecture. And that shouldn't be. Gaston Good Morning Nigeria called for more collaboration amongst security agencies and volunteers for better security synergy across board. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Report just reaching us says President Muhammadu Buhari has signed the Executive Order 009 entitled The Open Defecation Free Nigeria by 2025 and other related matters. In the order, Nigeria is committed to being open defecation free by 2025. To achieve this, the established national secretariat called Clean Nigeria Campaign Secretariat at the Federal Ministry of Water Resources. The secretariat is authorized on behalf of the president to implement this order by ensuring that all public places, including schools, hotels, field stations, places of worship, marketplaces, hospitals and offices have accessible toilets and latrines within their premises. All ministries, departments and agencies of government are also expected to cooperate with the Clean Nigeria Campaign Secretariat. The National Assembly and the State Houses of Assembly shall enact legislation on the practice of open defecation with appropriate sanctions and penalties. All development projects shall include construction of sanitation facilities as an integral part of the approval and implementation process. The Secretariat shall terminate when Nigeria is declared open defecation free. All enforcement authorities are hereby directed to diligently collaborate with the Federal Ministry of Water Resources in implementing this order. The Executive Order 009 came into being against the background that 
Nigeria is ranked second amongst the nations in the world with the highest number of people practicing open defecation estimated at over 46 million people, a practice which has had a negative effect on the populace and has contributed to the country's failure to meet the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, MDGs. President Buhari had described the statistics on open defecation and access to pipe-borne water service and sanitation as disturbing and had ha declared commitment to implement the National Water Supply, Sanitation and Hygiene Action Plan. The president had declared a state of emergency on Nigeria's water supply, sanitation and hygiene sector the action being imperative as it will reduce the high prevalence of waterborne diseases in different parts of the country which have caused preventable death. Nigeria has committed to end open defecation throughout the country by 2025 in consonance with her commitment to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This executive order takes effect from Wednesday November 20, 2019. Benue State's government has pledged its continued support to military formations in the state to ensure peace and national security. The state deputy governor, Benson Abuno, made this known when senior officers of Course 42 of the Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji, visited him at Government House. Makudi Bemhaya reports. The delegation made up of 32 officers drawn from the Nigerian Army, Air Force and Navy is in the state as part of their training. Benue State Deputy Governor Benson Abono commended the Nigerian military for tackling the high level of insecurity in the state which has brought relative peace. But for the soldiers of the Nigerian Army in particular, and with the help of the Navy and the Air Force that provided services on water and services on, in air, perhaps Benue State would have been overrun. Leader of the delegation, Brigadier General Kulia said, participants of course 42 are to take a study tour of six states in understanding the culture and efforts of the various state governments to improve on the living standards of their people as an aspect of national security. A few hours or a day that we've spent, we've seen that whatever effort we have put in place is really working. Sir. The theme of the exercise is assessing states and local governments' efforts in enhancing national security development. In Makudi, Bem Hanya. NTA News. President Muhammadu Buhari felicitates with former President Goodluck Jonathan on his 62nd birthday, joining the nation in praying for longer life, good health and more strength for him to keep serving the nation. President Buhari believes the former president's legacy of humility and patriotism will continue to resonate and inspire generations to come on the sacrifices made for the stability of democracy and promotion of sustainable development. Development. While rejoicing with family, friends and political associates of the former president, President Buhari lauded him for good counsels to leaders within and outside Nigeria since he left office and wishes the former president and his family more years of joyful celebrations. Time to join Ruth in our Lagos Network Center. Hello Ruth, over to you. Thank you and welcome to Lagos. The return of articulated vehicles in some parts of Lagos is gradually affecting access to Apapa and Tinkan Island ports. Paul Omukago reports that the chaotic traffic situation in Apapa and environs was also blamed on reconstruction of some roads. For these officials, managing traffic in Lagos is a thankless job and something they must do to salvage the situation. 
Unlike a few weeks back, having access to a papa is becoming more difficult. With many articulated vehicles on queue waiting to be called, motorists try to outwit each other on the single lane open for traffic. We are finding it very difficult to get to a papa here. And uh, all these container bodies, they are not uh, even uh, helping anybody. Sometimes, even to move with a private car here, they are finding it very difficult for them to move around. Even to our own business. This is a uh, task force people, joint task force them. They say all cars will be moving around from morning to 10 o'clock. And now before the uh, trucks, we enter. So that's why you can see some roads today very clear. But sometimes everywhere we can park. The call-up system, they have to do it electronically so that it will work. This manual system of using call-up has failed. The tax force has been abused. We are always that we are facing a problem concerning hold-up, that uh, we are not happy with it at all. Roads like Liverpool and others undergoing reconstruction, as well as alleged extortion on the part of some traffic managers, residents say are part of the challenge. In Lagos, Paul Mukago, NTN News. The Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Mr. Sunday Dari, is advocating more participation of core members in skill acquisition programs to properly empower and position them as entrepreneurs. Bolaji Akim reports that this was his message to the inspection of facilities at the NYSC camp at Iyanopaja, Lagos. Representative of the Minister, who is the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Youth and Sport Development, Mr. Olushade Adeshola, was received at the Yanopaja camp of the NYSC by the State Coordinator, Mr. Sunday Aroni, who briefed the visitor on the situation of things in the camp. The team went around the facilities at the camp, which include the hostel, kitchen, and the medical section. After going around the facilities, the minister's representatives expressed satisfaction with the situation in the camp. Addressing the core members, he emphasized on the need for them to be dedicated and place the unity and peace of the country above other agenda. He noted that the service year is part of training period and their contribution to the development of their fatherland. On the part of the ministry, I highlighted to them some of the programs that will they have and wish upon completion of their uh, one-year mandatory attachment, they can now log on to, to assess the work placement, work experience placement, to assess the uh, digital online youth assembly, and many more of the initiatives of the ministry that are coming on stream. The visit is part of the ministry's efforts to improve the welfare of core members. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim, NTA News. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Boratai, says strengthening interagency cooperation is key to stamping out all forms of criminality in Nigeria. He was speaking at the flag off of Exercise Crocodile Smile 4 in Takwa Bay, Lagos. Dotu Oguyemi reports that the exercise is scheduled to end on the 23rd of December 2019. As crocodile smile is currently in effect and this scenario being played out here is an emergency by the Nigerian army to such occurrences when it arises in real time. Gunshots rent the air, a typical feature of any military operation. But in this case, a worthy demonstration of effective response to emergencies and superior tactical ability. This is the commitment of the Nigerian Army as Exercise Crocodile Smile 4 is flagged off. The exercise will be intelligent driven and will dovetail into real-time operation at any moment a potent threat is encountered. This will be in line with military constitutional role of conducting internal security operations in aid to civil authority. For the Lagos state government, the exercise is complementary to its efforts of reducing security threats in riverine communities to the barest minimum. I need to say that the issue of illegal bunker and pipeline vandalism have become a major challenge which I believe this exercise will fully address. 
combating national security challenges. Part of the exercise objectives is to further enhance troops' professional knowledge and capacity driven by technology. In Lagos, Totun Okunyemi, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues after this break. They swore an oath to serve our fatherland and defend the people. They traded their freedom, comfortable homes, and mortgaged their lives on the battleground for our unity and peaceful living. These are the great, fearless, loyal, and committed Nigerian armed forces who risked their lives courageously to safeguard our borders. But in the line of duty, many never returned. Nigerians, arise, let's celebrate our fallen heroes. Put on the remembrance emblem with pride to support the incapacitated and families of our fallen heroes. It is indeed befitting to honor the memory of the gallant part of the world who paid his reviews and prayers to keep the President Muhammad Buhari joins all ministries, parastatals, religious and corporate bodies to donate generously to the Emblem Appeal Lounge. Send your donations to these accounts. Account name, Emblem Appeal Lounge. Account number, 393-200-7526. Ecobank Nigeria PLC. This year, like every other year, for over a decade, we celebrate and reward African creatives around the world at the African Academy Awards Zafa 2019 in Abuja, Nigeria. The second homecoming event is a three-day gathering of industry stakeholders and enthusiasts to network as well as encourage and motivate budding talents. The movie screenings, exhibitions and masterclasses will hold at the Silverbed Galleria on the 22nd to 23rd November 2019. The awards and gala night on the 24th of November 2019 at the prestigious Transco Hilton Hotel Abuja. For inquiries and sponsorship, advert placements and tickets, call the following numbers on your screen now or visit www. This is wonderful. I'm super excited about it. Nothing is expected of them other than awesomeness. Zafa 2019. Come expecting the unexpected. The new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively taking a look at the traditional television and new media. Are they comparable or complementary? Media industry players give perspective on the trends, progress, challenges and the way forward. Find out on this compelling edition of TV Guide. Expository interviews with stars of the team within our space. Becky Madajemo of NTA, Utibe Umore of AIT, Nifemi Ogutai of TVC and a host of others. TV Guide, your indispensable companion, also feature Ya Madina. <laughs> A TV drama series on NTA. Let's get to meet the characters behind Yamadina. This edition also presents exciting features on tourism, culture, entertainment, sports, health, and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendors near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Thank you for rejoining us in Abuja. Now to legal news. The Court of Appeal Oweri sitting in Abuja has dismissed the appeals filed by the APC, ABGA and the Action Alliance against the victory of Governor Emeka Ihedioha of Imo State. The five-man panel of justices led by Justice OABC Omoele ruled that the petitions lacked merit. Olabo de Arewa reports. The appeal court in its judgment said the tribunal was right in dismissing the petitions of the three appellants. The court said the appellants failed to prove the allegations that Emeka Hiedioa 
did not win a cut out the votes in at least two thirds of Imo states. Also, the claims of irregularities during the said election were unsustainable. I want to call on them to join hands with the governor to develop Imo. It's a great inspiration that the point we are making, somebody understood it. The three appeals were consolidated for judgment by the appeal courts. In another development, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has entertained further arguments from the Police Service Commission, the Nigeria Police Force, the Ministry of Police Affairs, and the Attorney General of the Federation, over which agency is constitutionally empowered to recruit and employ constables into the police force. Citing Section 2 of the Gazette Public Service Rules, Counsel to the Police Service Commission, Kanwa Gabi SEN, said the Police Service Commission was the agency empowered for such purpose. Counsel to the Police Senior SEN raised a preliminary objection, saying that Section 6 of the 1999 Constitution reserved such functions for the Police Council, headed by the Inspector General of Police. Justice Ian Gekwo reserved judgment for the 4th of December 2019. In Abuja or Labo Darewa, NT News. Federal government's drive for massive infrastructural development across the country is receiving a boost as the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission is set to harmonize efforts at delivering better infrastructure to Nigerians. Benny Adams reports that the Infrastructure Commission is hosting experts from across the world for that purpose in Abuja. Imagine an infrastructure-sufficient Nigeria where you can comfortably take a train from Abuja to Lagos after work and resume duty the next day. Imagine a Nigeria where you can travel across Africa by road, walk to any hospital and receive world-class medical attention. The tool being deployed by the federal government to achieve this and more is public-private partnership to attract private capital. Whatever we say, we will do. The meeting here is aimed at accelerating bankable public-private partnership in the country. The Lekki loan was signed, $629 million coming from the private sector. The, the bottom line is having developing the bankable uh, uh, projects, projects that will be attractive to investors and to financiers. Uh, and this can be done. All we need is just to develop the knowledge. Having identified infrastructure development as a viable employer of labor, the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, in collaboration with the Nigerian Governors Forum, an office of the head of the service of the Federation, plans to harmonize efforts towards the delivery of infrastructure to Nigerians. Benny Adams, MTA News. And from Ado Ekiti, the federal government plans to raise the number and scope of entrepreneurs to tackle unemployment and boost economic growth in the country. Special advisor to the president on ease of doing business, Dr. Jumoke Oduole, stated this at a forum with entrepreneurs and bureaucrats in Ado Ekiti. Kola Adebu Buye has the report. The Business Made Easy was organized to remove the constraints and bottlenecks in doing business in Nigeria through the office of the Special Advisor to the President on Ease of Doing Business, with particular focus on addressing issues around soft infrastructure and improved efficiency of procedures that support an enabling business environment for improved competitiveness. We also want private sector to know about the automated processes for starting a business because at the end of the day we need more entrepreneurs to enter the formal sector um, so that the economy can grow and thrive. Um, MSMs are already almost 50% of the GDP and we need to aid them to be more competitive and more productive so that the economy can thrive. Governor Kadi Fayemi noted that partnership with the federal government through legislations and project implementation and execution to make equity a business even in Nigeria will be prioritized. Making equity a safe haven for investors. We will continue to work with our very progressive legislature where required to provide legislative support for making equity a business haven in Nigeria. The program later afforded participants from different parts of the Southwest region the opportunity to interact and wait forward for business to strive for economic development in Adoekiti, Kola, and Debobuyi, Antinus. 
The amended Deep Offshore Act has been described as a huge achievement in bridging production gap and enhancing economical benefits in the oil and gas sector. Guests on Tuesday Live explained that the new act will guarantee favorable return on investment for the country. Abu Bakar Usman Akwanga reports. The amended Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contract Act was signed into law on the 4th of November 2019, having been passed by the Senate. The ease with which the amendment was made by the 9th Senate after failing in the past and the National Assembly a communes and open a new vista in executive and legislative relations. The next uh, 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 PIB that comes out of this 9th National Assembly will be uh, nationalistic in its thinking, it will be patriotic and it will definitely cater to the needs of Nigerians and not the kinds of special interests that would have benefited from the continued non-amendment of, for example, the deep offshore uh, production sharing uh, amendment act a member of the pdp uh, proposed the amendment everybody supported it the government assented to it and today we have a bill that everybody is happy stakeholders say the development will promote friendly investment opportunities and increase revenue generation in the deep offshore they however emphasized on adequate publicity if the oil price goes from 61 dollars per barrel to 100 dollars uh, per barrel in that range if that's where the global oil price is it now goes from 2.5 percent to 4 percent which is where we now fall translate this law because it is very very important it's our livelihood oil okay so let all legends know that now we have a law that stipulates a b c in local languages so that people will understand that look there's a law now that will bring more money on NTA Tuesday Live, guests commended federal government for the feat achieved in defining the operational status of the oil sector, but raised concern on checking corruption. This amendment has shown, have introduced something new that is in criminalizing some of what those partitions have been doing. The essence of the adjustment of the sharing formula, they say, is to ensure that Production Sharing Contract Act benefits Nigerian government in Abuja. Abubakar Usman Akwanga. News. President Muhammadu Buhari felicitates with Lady Maiden Alex Ibru, Chairman, Publisher and Chief Executive Officer of Guardian Newspapers as she turns 70, congratulating her for a life of giving and coaching which has attracted recognitions and awards at home and abroad. In a statement, President Buhari commended Lady Ibru for providing strong leadership for the newspaper and other companies founded by her late husband, Dr. Alex Ibru, which includes the Trinity Foundation. While praying for more years of good health, strength and wisdom for Lady Ibru, the President explains that her contributions to the cause of the girl child and underprivileged families in the nation is commendable. The Barbary is in our Port Harcourt Network Center for more stories from that axis. Hello, the Barbary. Welcome to Port Harcourt. River State Governor Yesa Mwiki has urged the monarch of Krika Kingdom to use his position to promote peace and development in his domain. The governor was speaking during a courtesy visit by the Amayina of Krika and prominent chiefs of Krika at Government House, Port Harcourt. Ogedi Ekri completes the report. Governor Wike, playing host to the amenable of Okrika and other chiefs from the kingdom, said that the primary goal of his administration is to promote the interests of River State. He emphasized that his administration does not belong to any particular group, but for all River's people. The governor commended the Okrika people for their role during the last elections. Well, I want to tell you to use this opportunity God has given you to unite everybody. Does not matter those who fought you. I don't want to say, okay, now I have won, I'll deal with you. No, that will not be the best. That will not be to the good of Africa. Rather, it will retard development. Governor Wicken warned the people against bearing arms, saying that it negates the principle of peace. He assured the amenable of approaching the River State House of Assembly for the amendment of the name of the state of Africa as requested by the monarch. 
Amenable of Okrika Kingdom, King Afro Seminitari Abam congratulated the River State Governor on his re election and the confirmation of his victory by the Supreme Court. The care of human life and happiness and never oppression and destruction is the first and only legitimate object of good governance. He also thanked Governor Wike for the recognition granted his tool after the court judgment. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwe, NTA News. Officers and men of the 6th Division Nigerian Army have been charged to maintain an integrity and loyalty in the discharge of their duties. The incoming General Officer Commanding 6th Division Port Harcourt, Major General Felix Agogo, gave the charge while taking over the mantle of leadership of the Army Headquarters 6th Division Port Harcourt. Osnach Abraham has details. <laughs> The handing and taking over ceremony is between Major General Jamel Sahan as the outgoing General Officer Commanding 6th Division and Major General Felix Agogo as the incoming General Officer Commanding 6th Division. Both GOCs thank the Chief of Army Staff for the opportunity given them to serve in various capacities. This according to the same support some level of cooperation, but even more than the one you are giving to me. I am not going to change the direction. All I can do is to ask you, we can increase the reading so that the boat can move faster. The handover ceremony also featured the decoration of the newly promoted officers. Uh, I think it's a call for more commitment to duty and I want to assure the Nigerian army that uh, I will uphold those virtues to the best of my ability. The General Officer Commanding 6th Division, Major General Felix Agogo, is the fifth GOC since the creation of 6th Division Army Headquarters in Port Harcourt. Osinachi Abraham, NTA News. The call by the federal government for all hands to be on deck in the agricultural sector that will ensure Nigerians produce greater percentage of what is consumed has continued to gain wide acceptance in Aquaibom State as the state government has concluded plans to establish firms, firms across the 31 local government areas of the state. Governor Don made this known at the 2019 South-South Agro Summit held in Uyo, Aquaibom State. Kelvin Samuel reports. The quest for economic stability across the country has continued to rise with the wise ones stowing the part of agriculture which will not only ensure security but also create job opportunities for the teeming youth that will lead to drastic reduction of crimes as it is said that a hungry man is an angry man. To achieve our goals of ensuring that 80% of what is consumed at the state is produced within, on or before 2023, the Aquibon State Government has continued to organize seminars and employment for farmers across the state. One of such is the 2019 South-South Agro Summit with a theme, Repositioning Agriculture for Sustainable Development. If you can effortlessly assemble young people, everybody, young men and women, it means that you are having horrendous levels of unemployment and idle youth in the society. It is, however, our hope that the benefits of the present Expo Stroke Summit will surpass those of the first, considering the spread, magnitude and significance of the activities. The biggest challenge for us having dominant economies is the weak state of our capacity for aggregation point of the event was an exhibition of agricultural products from the 31 local government areas of the state. In Uyo, Kevin Samuel, NTA News. And as our contribution from Port Harcourt is back to Nolin for the rest of the news. Good evening. Thank you, Dibabari. And now in Abuja, the joy upon the arrival of a baby to the family knows no bounds, but it was mixed feelings for the families of Emmanuel Igente, whose wife Susan gave birth to quintuplets. Shaibo Noziakubu was at the Federal Medical Center, Jabi Abuja, where the babies and their mother are responding to treatment. The parents of the quintuplet Emmanuel and Susan Egenti were married in 2003. 16 years down the lane, they were just blessed with five children, three girls and two boys through in vitro fertilization IVF. 
Mr. Emmanuel Egenti and his wife, both natives of Umagbo village in Anambra state, but resident in Abuja, while appreciating the gift of God, solicit the assistance of the government and other public spirited individuals to come to their aid in any way possible. Since 2003, when I married, nothing like this. We have been going here and there, suffering. At last, I tell my wife, say, I can't go anywhere again. If God wants to leave us like that, let him leave us. But we believe in one God, our living God. So this period now, God has done it. I want Nigerian government to train, help me to train them for school. Head of Clinical Services at the Federal Medical Center, Abuja, Dr. Felix Roland Bolorunduro, says it was a rare fit at the hospital for successfully delivering quintuplets through IVF. The uh, mother is doing fine. The babies as well, they were delivered via caesarean section. Uh, they are only in, in the world admitted presently. And they are presently out of uh, incubator. The uh, a present uh, social economic uh, situation of the couple, particularly, they have low social economic status. Have, we learned that a man is staying in a one room apartment uh, in uh, Utaku village. And so we we are faced with the dilemma of discharging them to a one room apartment, uh, knowing the health implications, particularly with the children. And so that is why we've been very hesitant in releasing uh, the family. It is obvious they cannot take care of these babies properly. So we need at least three nannies for them since the mother-in-law is around. Since its establishment, this is the first time the Federal Medical Center in Jabi Abuja is delivering quintuplets through cesarean session. Shuaibu Onoze Aokubu, NTA News. We say congratulations to the family of the quintuplets. Now, the growing need for social work and services in Nigeria has again prompted professionals in the field to advocate the enactment of a law to establish the National Institute of Social Work. The first public lecture on professionalization of social work offered the platform to make their voice louder. Correspondent Aliu Rabe Aliu reports that the lecture was organized by the Pan-African School of Social Work in collaboration with the University of Abuja. Eight-year-old Princess Sophia and six-year-old Queen Benita were raising alarms on impact of social problems voices that many believe should not be dismissed considering the high need for social services in the country. The establishment of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs is seen as good for the social structure and programs in managing societal problems. In consideration to the social issues we have in our country today, so we look at it that social work should be a profession that will solve the pro most of the problems. Meaning that the antidote will be presented to the audience and it is the hope of the entire nation that uh, the message will metamorphose and be applicable to all individual endeavors. Is that social work should be professionalized. I will call on the National Assembly to pass to be on the professionalization of social work. Let that be, be passed and uh, we plead with Mr. President to ascend to the bee so that social work practice will be professionalized. Uh, social work has come to stay in Nigeria and uh, we need to work together with the, the cooperation of everybody, all the stakeholders. If Sophia and Benitez are still headed, new generation in social work educators, practitioners and administrators that can make the society better through human services, social welfare, income maintenance, mental health and social deployment will emerge. In Abuja, Ali Rapa Aliu, NTA News. Zenred is ready with report from our JOS studio. Hello Zenred. Hello Nolin and welcome to JOS. 
Another set of over 300 civilian Joint Task Force members have completed a United Nations Development Program UNDP training at the Citizenship and Leadership Training Center, Cherry Hills in Jos. This is part of continuing efforts to, at enhancing conflict resolution and peaceful coexistence in the region. David Ijashio reports. The 14 days training was to equip the participants with requisite skills for self-assessment and self-reliance techniques for better performance in their environment. All the 332 participants were drawn from Borno State and exposed to vigorous physical training to gain insight on values reorientation, national consciousness, and cross-cultural understanding. It is expected that after this course, participants will have positive use and to acquire skills and techniques for self-assessment for better performance of duties. This will aid the participants in better decision making at all levels which could have positive impacts on their lives. We have been taught so many things, so we are happy and we pray that all what we have learned here in the Citizenship Leadership Training Center will pass it over to our colleagues who have not been able to have the opportunity to be here. Awards were presented to participants who distinguished themselves at the course of the training. In Jaws, David Jashim, NTA News. To solidify peace in Plateau State, the Operation Safe Haven, in collaboration with the Civil Military Relief Initiative and Plateau State Government, have commenced the training of repentant Sarasuka members in Gainful Ventures. Caleb Gochin has details. It is no longer news that Plateau State has, over the years, had its fair share of devastation as a result of civil unrest. It has also been in the news that a group of young persons known as Sarasuka has been terrorizing members of the public in recent times. However, the good news is that a number of these youths have voluntarily disowned membership of the gang, hence they are here undergoing various forms of training to enable them live more profitable lives. This turning point today will be part of your success story tomorrow. Make provide of the opportunity so that at the end successful in life. Commander Operation Safe Heaven, Major General Augustin Agundu, pressed the bold steps taken by the youth. Finish with denounce violence in this totality and you will be able to preach within your community and within your household that violence pays nobody any good. We promise to give him the best to be able to manage whatever resources they give into our hands so that we can give an example for others to come out. It is the view of all concerned that Plateau and indeed Nigeria would be a better place if citizens join hands with law enforcement agencies to rid the land of negative conducts. In Jaws, Caleb Gochin, NTN News. That's it from Jaws. There's more on Nationwide with Nolin in Abuja. Thank you, Zenred. Now to political news. The All Progressives Congress has condemned the post-election violence reported in Kogi State, which led to the death of a People's Democratic Party woman leader, Salome Abu, and destruction of property in the state. In a statement by its National Publicity Secretary, Larry Issa Onilu says the APC abhors violence and other criminalities which continue to plague the electionary process and urged partisans to see election as a democratic contest and not a do or die affair. The party pray that the culprits are caught and the full weight of the law is brought to bear on them. The APC reminds the people that President Muhammadu Buhari had advised partisans that are not satisfied with the results of governorship elections in Kogi and Bielsa states to seek redress in court and shun violence. And now we will join Ogochukuka Ona in Benin. How are you doing, Ogochukuka? Very well, thank you.
you, Nolin. Good afternoon and welcome. Gender-based policies, institutional interventions, and expansion of education and community-focused engagements have been identified as some of the ways to prevent forced migration and trafficking. This was by key players at the launch of UN Women and Government of Italy projects on preventing forced migration and trafficking of women and girls in Nigeria. Eugenia Andubisi has details that first documented and undocumented migration and trafficking include Edo and Delta states. Despite steps taken by government to address forced migration and trafficking, mainstream interventions often do not take adequate account of gender differences, nor sufficient responses targeted at their particular concerns. Based on the need for gender responsive interventions to address forced migration and trafficking, UN Women, in collaboration with the government of Nigeria and Italy, is implementing a pilot intervention in Edo and Lagos states to eradicate the scourge. This We welcome every positive move, every positive intervention. Over 70% of persons travel globally are women. So we are adopting a gender methodology. It will deepen the work, the huge work that has already been done over the years. We should be able to strengthen the institutions that trains the minds. We also have other institutions like the church and other places where people's character are being uh, molded. Panelists focused on strengthening the voice and leadership of women and girls in efforts to prevent it. The UN Women and Government of Italy project to prevent forced migration and trafficking of women and girls in Nigeria is a two-year plan. In Benin, Eugenia Andivisi, NTA News. The Minister of State for Budgets and National Planning, Clement Agba, wants all hands on deck in order to tackle the flooding menace in parts of Benin and other communities in Edo State. The Minister made his appeal during a thank you visit to the Benin monarch, Oba Ewai II. The minister who was in the palace to express his appreciation to the Oba on his role in requesting that President Muhammad Buhari considered Edo for two ministerial slots expressed his concerns about the flooding situation in parts of the state, especially Benin, having served as Commissioner for Environment and Public Utilities in the immediate past administration, adding that the stormwater plan, when completed, will help solve the problem. It's a plan uh, that will take uh, at least 30 years to accomplish. There are 23 troubled uh, areas, 23 catchment areas. As a government, uh, that of uh, Governor Adam Sushomali had already taken care of about eight. That project is 70% complete. But until we continue that underground drainage, we won't be able to solve uh, the problem of uh, flooding in that, uh, in that area. The Benin monarch used the opportunity to express hope for a better country. We will give a prayer for this president, give a prayer for the entire country, for all the family and the entire country, for peace, tranquility. The minister was accompanied on the visit by political associates. Nolin will be back with more reports after this break. Please stay tuned. 20 years of travel and counting. 20 years of promoting tourism in Africa and diaspora. Over 3 million kilometers traveled. Over 30 African countries visited. Explored the diaspora in four continents. Connected over 100,000 happy tourists to Africa. Reached over 50 million homes. Igniting smiles across Africa and beyond. As Gobi Africa turns 20, we thank you and invite you to join us in the quest for 20 must-visit destinations in partnership with the largest TV network in Africa, the NDA, Ministry of Information and Culture, Ministry of Transportation, Lagos State Government, Kana, Delta Airlines, Royal Caribbean, Tour Brokers International. You too can still be a partner. Call the numbers on your screen or info at gogeafrica.tv. Goge 